okay um i think we have everyone so i'm going to start um hello everyone my name is anushka jain i work as the policy counsel at internet freedom foundation thank you for joining this twitter space today where we will be discussing the ongoing protest against the use of the national mobile monitoring system the nmms app for the payments of wages under the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme the app has been made mandatory for all narega worksites this means that attendance of workers which so far used to be registered on physical muster roll uh, will now that will fill daily on the worksite and subject to the scrutiny of workers engaged on the site will now be filled through an app on a smartphone the attendance of the worker will only be successfully entered on the app when two time stamped one in the morning before work begins and one in the afternoon after work completion and geo stamped photos are taken in a day there have been multiple cases where workers have come to work but have not been marked present and therefore not paid wages for the work they have done for the day because the photos could not get uploaded due to server issues or connectivity issues this apart from the fact that the nmms app even if functioning at its optimum best could not solve a single issue that currently constrains the narega workers from accessing their legal entitlements under the law the aadhaar based payment system has also been made mandatory for narega wage payments with effect from 1st february 2023 this means that narega workers whose bank accounts are not eligible eligible for abps will no longer receive wage payments for work they have already done as per the ministry's own data 57% of narega workers have bank accounts that are not abps compliant which means more than half of the narega workers will not be eligible to receive wage payments we are joined today by rajendra narayan of liptech india nikhil day of mazdoor kisan Sang- shakti sangathan ashish ranjan of jan jagran shakti Shakti Sangathan and Rakshita Swami of Social Accountability Forum for Action and Research. We have been working with the protesters to discuss the issue. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'll just start with the questions directly. For the people who may not be aware about the issue, can you briefly explain how the protests came about, and do you think increased dependence on techno solutionism for governance plays a role here? Yeah, so I'm going to begin. Uh, I'll first give a roughly a couple of minutes of just the great larger context, and in the questions that you've asked, I will look in particular in about five minutes at the NMMS app itself and its impact. Um, so my name is Nikhil. I work as I was introduced with the Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangatan. The reason that we've had to now come. all of us from all across the country on a 100 day protest is because these many many attempts were made to try and communicate to people that narega was in deep trouble because of these so called solutions i would like to briefly first say that i think everyone has an idea but narega offers a 100 days of guaranteed wage employment to people to every household rural household and it is a self selection process but the best way to describe narega and what it offers is the slogan that defines narega which was har hath ko kaam do kaam ka pura daam do and after the law was passed it became har hath ko kaam mile kaam ka pura daam mile now we are today focusing on a small part of narega but it shows us how a small part can affect the entire framework of the law and the right of everyone to get every hand get work and get a just reward for that work which is what narega offered it gave people during covid it gives people during uh, distress and it gives people on a continual basis particularly women access to wage employment to where they are in their area for building assets the tech aspects of narega have been there from the beginning including an mi system a website system all kinds of things i don't have the time to go into it but i would like to say there are two principles we need to look at one is is the tech appropriate i don't think tech has to be only digital and narega has many many areas where tech can be non digital as well but even when you are using digital technology is it the technology that's the most useful to make it most efficient number 1 and number 2 are you making it mandatory because if you make it mandatory in a program which is right across the country it's not just a question of digital divide it's a question of millions of divides where there are 15 crore workers 
the nmms app is an example of neither being appropriate and because it's mandatory being absolutely diabolical and very destructive to the rights of the workers destructive to the program itself uh, as it was explained what does it do it requires those two uh, stamped uh, location stamped photographs time stamped photographs to be uploaded every day against every one of those crores of workers who are working but let's just go into the theory of what you are trying to do narega as many of you may not know pays people on a piece rate basis which means it pays people as per the quantum of work turned out so you're taking photographs of people but you're not taking photographs of work so work wages are supposed to be paid the accountability mechanism of narega vis-a-vis -vis workers is to measure the work now even if someone turns up for work let us say your app at the best is working perfectly which of course it's not but even if it is working perfectly you've only taken photographs of people you they can still come and stand under the tree or sit somewhere and not do their work and then they would not have so the app is not benefiting us and giving us proper accountability that's the first first problem the second problem is let us say your app is actually identifying that there you're taking photographs of all those who have come and who have not worked even but we have cases of people being take, photographed many times at many places on the same day the same group of five is photographed changing their lugri doing other things changing their clothes so that they represent as if they are 50 people because they are photographed in groups of five or photographs have been taken at market places who has the time to eyeball and look at all those crores of photographs so it is really an insane system there are photographs up there questions of privacy be damn but there are photographs up there who's looking at them and even when they've been pointed out nobody is taking action on them so the so called transparency and citizen monitoring which should take place locally is not taking place at all and then of course the harms and i'll end with that the harms are disastrous people are going all the way there when they don't get on the app the mates are sending them home the mates themselves who are who are like from workers families don't have smartphones you and i know in big cities that the internet connectivity does not work we are supposed to get it from there the government makes excuses saying okay later on they've opened it up that you can also upload offline but actually first you have to download the the e master roll onto your phone then you have to do this app and worst of all from those of us from the right to information point of view who said yes put something on the website put everything out for transparency but make sure that you have backup paper stuff that people can look at the right to information campaign came out of master roll dikhao show us the master rolls now this order has said remove everything that is hard copy and only have the digital master roll in that mate's phone nobody will be able to see what thievery is going on and one pakka way in which you can tell that it's really not working is if you go and ask the ministry can you now guarantee that everyone who you have photographed so corruption is ended so they can give no such guarantee so the whole idea of ending corruption not trusting the systems where people can actually monitor and not actually making your own supervisory authorities do their work and unloading things leads us to this conclusion the ministry knows what's going on the government knows what's going on that it's not working but it's only causing disruption is that they really want to cause disruption thank you thank you anil for that and i agree with um, you know what you've said in terms of there being a gap between the technology solution and whether it's actually leading to what the government says it wants to do that is end corruption and increase transparency but what is interesting is that you've you know you've just said that the government is aware but you know in the parliament uh, they have said in a parliamentary answer that we do not have any information about anybody not receiving wages we do not have any information about anybody uh, protesting even though the protests are ongoing and jat at jantar mantar and we have also went iff has also gone and talked to the people at jantar mantar and they've said that you know this is something that's happening and we've reported it to our supervisors but still no action is being taken now um i also want to talk about the other aspect of this which is the aadhar based payment system so ashish and rajendran uh, if you could tell me um the linking of the aadhar based payment system uh, has also been flagged as a cause of concern um can you tell us how the system has affected workers and their rights 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'll start by discussing how the entire aspect of Aadhaar-based payment system came in, and what is the what is the rationale behind what was the government's rationale behind it, and what are the problems. So earlier, I think uh, the gram panchayats used uh, to. Rajendran, there seems to be some kind of disturbance um, in your voice. Can you is it, try? Is it better now? Uh, a little better, yeah. Yeah. So I was saying that earlier, gram panchayats used to get funds directly from the central government before works would be executed and implemented at the panchayat level. But there has been a steady centralization of the act over the years, especially from 2016. the government of india under the bjp regime started something called the national electronic fund management system through which the primacy that was given to the gram panchayats in implementing the program through the mandatory 73rd constitutional amendment that has steadily undergone that has been steadily getting violated and this is around the time when there was a big push to introduce aadhar in narega now where does aadhar play a role in narega there are broadly there are three steps here the first is verification of job cards when it was introduced the idea in, uh, of introducing aadhar in job uh, aadhar in narega by the government of india was to say that we are going to delete those job cards which have duplicates all what they call fake job cards or ghost job cards the second is for directing payments wherein you the government of india will transfer money to the aadhar number of an individual and whichever bank account the aadhar number of that individual is linked to the money would be deposited to that account and this is called the aadhar payment bridge system and the third thing is at the withdrawal stage when uh, workers can go to a banking correspondent which is a private individual who carries a pos machine a pos machine is like your credit card machine where a worker can press their use the biometric thumbprint on that machine and withdraw money so the idea is that when you withdraw money your uh, when you put your thumb print that gets linked to your bank account and you are able to withdraw money so that's the idea and this is called the aadhar enabled payment system so there are three things as i said now as far as the verification of job cards is concerned because of a mad rush to to link job cards with aadhar many genuine job cards got deleted in the process now and and there are surveys to indicate that roughly 57% of active job cards also got uh, deleted in in some states now as far as directing payments through aadhar is concerned the other the alternative which is the standard way to do any kind of online money transfer is called the account based system so account based system is basically you just take the account number the ifsc code of the individual and the name of the individual and the branch and you transfer money to that so when you do that it's 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 the standard way in which you do any kind of google pay phone pay kind of transaction now aadhar introducing aadhar here uh, instead of actually easing the entire process it has introduced many new layers of complication and contrary to what the government's claims the government has made two broad claims one regarding directing payments through the aadhar system is that Uh, the the first claim is that it improves efficiency and the second claim is that it has reduced delays in wage payments now when we did an analysis of about 6 lakh aadhar based payments and 11 lakh account based payments we found that there was no statistical difference in the time taken to transfer money and even in my own rti uh, requests even in my own rtis the government said that it has reduced delays in wage payments but our large scale large sample analysis has shown that there is absolutely no difference so it raises an important question when things are broken why do you want to fix it when the account system is worked when the account based system is working fine why do you want to introduce a complicated technology which has absolutely no no gains as far as reduction in wage delays are concerned and on the question of efficiency in fact it has created more inefficiency and more complications because the system is so centralized now there are two kinds of problems that can happen at least one is your payment can get rejected if there is a uh, it think of it like a bounced check now if it's a if it's a if it's a question of a mistake in your account number a worker can go to the block level computer operator and give the correct account number and that operator would be able to fix it immediately then and there but 
when there is a payment rejection due to aadhar issues the workers are sent pillar to post because the official reason that gets registered online on many occasions it's called inactive aadhar and contrary to what workers and most officials at the lower level think inactive aadhar is not when your aadhar becomes inactive but it's actually when there is a software mapping issue with the national payments corporation of india which is a clearing house for aadhar based payments now what it does is that workers and field level officials have no clue about rectifying how uh, rectifying these kind of errors and a more egregious kind of error that has happened that we have also documented and many others have is the issue of misdirected payments what happens when your aadhar number gets linked to someone else's bank account and when the money is transferred to your aadhar number you don't know but the money is going to someone else's bank account and that person who is receiving it has no clue where this money is coming from so this cre- this has also created a lot of problems and these are impossible to detect unless one does a thorough ground survey so these are some very critical issues for us to think about when we are discussing opaque technologies and technologies that have absolutely no monitoring or regulation and in the name of efficiency it's actually created more chaos and inefficiency and i'll i'll just add one more point as far as uh, taking out payments when i said the aadhar enable payment system is using one's thumbprint there uh, the banking correspondents are private individuals who have who are absolutely unmonitored and unregulated they do not give any receipts for any kind of withdrawal and there is a lot of corruption that is happening when these banking correspondents charge money from the workers to withdraw their own money and even multiple surveys multiple field surveys have shown including ours that on average about 40% of the times the biometric thumbprint of an individual does not work in the first attempt which means they have to make multiple visits to withdraw their money so from all these standpoints introduction of aadhar based payments and making it mandatory is going to create a massive distress it's going to be a huge problem for the workers on the ground and computers for all their advances in logic they struggle with concepts like fairness and and the correctness to deal with things so i think i'll stop here thank you thank you thank you rajendran um ashish hello yes yeah तो मैं राजेंद्रन ने जहां तक बात की है उससे आगे ले जाऊंगा और थोड़ा सा जमीनी जो हकीकत है उससे आप लोगों को परिचय कराऊंगा आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम से पहले भी जो पेमेंट सिस्टम था आपको मालूम होगा कि वो अकाउंट बेस्ड था और उससे पहले पोस्ट ऑफिस बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम था और उससे पहले कैश था तो जब से पिछले दस बारह सालों से नरेगा में लगातार पेमेंट सिस्टम को लेकर खिलवाड़ किया जा रहा है और सरकार ने अभी तक कोई भी व्हाइट पेपर जारी नहीं किया है जिससे हमें पता चले स्पष्ट रूप से पता चले कि भाई इस पेमेंट सिस्टम और उस पेमेंट सिस्टम में अंतर क्या है उससे क्या एडवांटेजेस हैं और क्या हुआ है अभी तक तो ये एक पॉइंट रहा है कि जैसा राजेंद्रन बोल रहे थे कि ओपेक सिस्टम है और किसी को पता नहीं है बस एक कन्विक्शन है कि आधार पे सिस्टम बढ़िया होगा इसलिए उसको लागू कर दे Uh, लेकिन उसकी कोई लॉजिक और उसकी उसकी जो मैट्रिक्स है एफिशिएंसी की वो हमें नहीं बताई जाती है ग्राउंड लेवल पे ये हो रहा है कि यहाँ तो आ, कल जैसे मैंने एक व्यक्ति से बात की और वो बैंक दो दिन से जा रहे थे उनका बैंक खाता स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया कुर्सा काटा ब्लॉक में है और उन्होंने जब खाता खुलवाया था तो अपने गाँव के एक सी में खुलवाया था आधार दे ही खुलवाया था अब गाँव के सी में उनका बायोमेट्रिक काम नहीं करता वो दो दिन से बैंक जा रहे थे ये कहते हुए कि मुझे यहाँ से विड्रॉवल स्लिप भर के मैं अपना पैसा निकाल लू बैंक मैनेजर ने रिफ्यूज कर दिया फिर मैंने बात की बैंक मैनेजर से तो बैंक मैनेजर ने कहा कि इनका सिग्नेचर अपलोडेड नहीं है अब उसने सच कहा या झूठ कहा मुझे पता नहीं लेकिन उस व्यक्ति के परस्पेक्टिव से आप देखिए तो वो दो दिन वहां गया और बैंक उसे पैसे नहीं मिले फिर उन्होंने कहा कि आप सी से जाके ऑथराइज करके लाइए कि आपका सही अकाउंट है जबकि उनके पास सारा कुछ सिस्टम पे था वो वापस सीएसपी के पास गया और उसे पता चला कि अब ये सीएसपी डिफंक्ट हो गया है इसकी जो एक आईडी मिलता है सीएसपी को वो किसी कारण से जो कि हमें नहीं बताया गया वो काम नहीं कर रहा है अब ये वापस इस चक्कर में इस व्यक्ति के दो दिन गए 
और फिर जब हमने कहा कि अब हम लोग ओम्बर्ड्स पर्सन के पास जाएंगे हम लोगों ने एक रिटर्न एप्लीकेशन दिया उस व्यक्ति ने रिटर्न एप्लीकेशन लिखवाने के लिए किसी को ढूंढा और दो दिन पूरा वक्त बर्बाद हो गया जहां हमारी बैंकिंग व्यवस्था की ये हालत है वहां हम एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि एक आधार बेस्ड सिस्टम से चीजें ठीक हो जाएंगी तो ये मुझे लगता है कि बहुत ही बेवकूफी वाला कदम है एक चीज जो आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम से हुई है जिस पर अन्य लोगों ने भी बात की होगी कि मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट का आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम एनेबल्ड ही नहीं है यानी लोग काम करेंगे मजदूरी कर लेंगे और जब उनका वेज लिस्ट यानी पैसा जनरेट होने का वेज लिस्ट जनरेट होने का वक्त आएगा तब सिस्टम अलाउ नहीं करेगा कि उनका वेज लिस्ट जनरेट हो ये बहुत बड़ी समस्या बन के यहाँ पर आ रही है इसका वर्क अराउंड लोग ये कर रहे हैं कि अगर 20 मजदूर एक साइट पे काम करते हैं और मान लीजिए कि पांच का एनेबल्ड नहीं है आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम तो काम करने के बाद जब वेज लिस्ट जनरेट करने की बारी आती है तो उन पांच मजदूरों का जिनका एनेबल्ड नहीं है उनका वर्क हिस्ट्री ही डिलीट कर देते हैं अब इन मजदूरों को कब पैसा मिल पाएगा या मिल पाएगा भी कि नहीं ये कोई नहीं जानता इस तरह की तकलीफें जो हैं गांव स्तर पे ब्लॉक स्तर पे बहुत ज्यादा हो रही हैं और इसीलिए मैक्रो अगर लेवल डेटा देखें तो पहली बार कोविड के बाद ऐसा हुआ है कि आपको नरेगा में परसेंटेज जो जनरेट हुआ है वो कम हुआ है इस मंथ तो ये 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 मुझे लगता है कि ये जो पेमेंट सिस्टम है इसको इसलिए लागू किया गया है कि करप्शन रुके जैसा कि निखिल बोल रहे थे ऐसा सरकार कह रही है करप्शन रुके लेकिन ग्रास रूट लेवल पे तो ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं दिख रहा है करप्शन जो होता है वो को ऑप्शन से हो रहा है आखिरकार किसी के खाते में पैसा जा रहा है और वो व्यक्ति जो है वो पैसा उठा के किसी मिडलमैन किसी पॉलिटिशियन या ब्लॉक लेवल अधिकारी ये जो नेक्सेस है उन उसको उस तक पहुंचा रहा है तो करप्शन भाई जब को ऑप्शन हो रहा है तो आधार उसमें क्या करेगा ये एक बहुत बड़ा प्रश्न चिन्ह है आ, हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि आ, दो तीन महीने और जब हो जाते हैं अभी तो सरकार ने इकतीस मार्च तक वापस जो पुराना वाला पेमेंट सिस्टम था अकाउंट बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम उसको अलाउ किया है जब वो भी सरकार बंद कर देगी तो बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर और खासकर क्योंकि अभी अब अप्रैल का महीना आ रहा है जब पूरे देश में सबसे ज्यादा काम होता है नरेगा में अप्रैल मई जून ये हेवी वर्क लोड पीरियड है इस समय मुझे लगता है कि करोड़ों लोग अपने पेमेंट से वंचित होंगे और बैंक वो बार बार जाएंगे और ढूंढते रह जाएंगे कि मेरा आधार जो है किस बैंक अकाउंट से लिंक्ड है ये भी बहुत बात हो रही है कि लोगों के पास मल्टीपल बैंक अकाउंट्स हो गए हैं क्योंकि बहुत तरह की एजेंसियां गांव में काम कर रही हैं और आधार लेके उनका अकाउंट बना रही हैं तो उन्हें कई बार पता भी नहीं रहता है कि उन्होंने एक अकाउंट बना के रखा है हो सकता है वो ऑपरेट नहीं करते हैं उस और ऐसे एग्जाम्पल्स कई है ढेरों एग्जाम्पल्स मुझे मिले हैं जहां लोगों को पता ही नहीं चल रहा है कि उनका पेमेंट किस बैंक अकाउंट में हुआ है तो बस मैं इतनी बात रखूंगा थैंक यू थैंक यू आशीष डेफिनेटली इट्स वेरी वरिंग टू हियर अबाउट लेवल आई आल्सो वांट टू आई आल्सो वांट टू टॉक टू रक्षिता नाउ अबाउट व्हाट इज द अल्टरनेटिव अकॉर्डिंग टू यू दैट शुड बी पुट इन प्लेस टू इंश्योर दैट वर्कर्स आर गेटिंग द वेजेस दैट आर ड्यू टू देम वाइल आल्सो फुलफिलिंग द legitimate aim of the government in trying to reduce corruption yeah um so as you can see i mean um, the previous speakers have mentioned about the kinds of implications that nmms and ebps have uh, brought into the implementation of narega and one large point is one can also see that these technological interventions are actually le- leading to violations of the law it's leading to loss of entitlements that are protected under under the legislation for workers and there is simply no accountability from government of india from state governments on these uh, loss of entitlements and these technological interventions have been intru- introduced with no consultative processes today in fact it it's it was also reported in the media that uh, the ministry of rural development made one field pilot in rajasthan and through that institutionalized and scaled up nmms across the country so no parliament no assembly no employment guarantee councils which are statutory platforms under the law were ever consulted let alone the public and the workers on on these things and uh, 
I think apart from the specific instances, detailed instances that were uh, spoken about by Rajendra and Ashish and Nikhil, uh, we have to also kind of understand that even if NMMS and ABPS would actually operate with total efficiency, even if that was the case that there was no mobile network issue, there was no server issue, even conceptually, it is not solving any of the problems that are plaguing Nariga. So whether in payments, if you look at delay payments, people having to go to banks, withdraw their wages, having to pay bribes in the process, dealing with rejected payments or misdirected payments, AB ABPS is not solving any of that. In the national mobile monitoring system, just because photos are being uploaded, it's not indicated anywhere whether the person is the actual person who was on the work site, completed the amount of work that was given. So it's like the common analogy we often use uh, to try and explain the gravity of the situation is almost that you're moving around with big hammers and looking for a nail uh, on which to hit. That's your imposing solutions with no cognizance of actually what the real problem is and what kinds of solutions are being sought. Um, that brings me to the point, Anushka, that you flagged on what are possibilities. And this is something that we are consistently, workers who are protesting in Delhi, campaigns, worker groups have been sharing and uh, recommending to governments that more openness, more transparency and more public participation is what will enable people to keep a check on corruption in Narega. So bringing back master roles in the physical domain on the work sites uh, bringing social audits back where workers have an institutionalized platform to verify information that's there, uh, records that are there of the program and check it uh, to actual testimonies and lived realities, making information on management information system that much more demystifies, demystified and accessible. So there are ways, these ways have worked. Actually, we are now regressing. I mean, we've had years of success of these processes like social audits, openness, transparency, which are actually now the gains, we're losing uh, the ground that we have gained through these technological interventions being brought in the name of anti-corruption, but doing the total opposite. And lastly, I wanted to say that it is not that everybody who's condemning these and groups and workers who are condemning these kinds of impositions of digital technology are against digital technology. There are numerous instances where digital technology actually can benefit workers in accessing their rights and entitlements if they are introduced. For instance, registering Narega demand online. It is a perfect use of a digital platform. Like, uh, like we go onto websites to book tickets on IRCTC, why can't there be an unhindered access to the Narega website where workers can register their demand, get an acknowledgement, acknowledgement for it? Because we know that that is one of the major bottlenecks on the ground. Uh, the Gram Rosgar Sahayak frontline functionaries are resisting capturing the real demand on the ground because of fund constraints, because of their inability to provide work on demand. So actually opening up registration of demand of Narega through the website as an additional mechanism, not the only mechanism, is one way that digital technology can actually empower workers. Uh, the second is you have so many, You, I mean, uh, the Narega website has been a pioneer in tracking down every transaction detail of the program. Today on the website, you can see the number of workers to whom wages are delayed, number of workers, list of workers to whom work has not been provided within 15 days. So why can't a digital system automatically pay unemployment allowance due, delay compensation that's payable to workers? Uh, so there are numerous ways in which digital technology can actually be used to further workers' rights. Uh, but it's very clear that uh, the ministry is not aligned to that vision. And we feel that these use of these digital interventions and technologies being imposed on workers without any consultation, not just with workers in public, but not even with their formal mechanisms of consultation, uh, is just is just to align with their vision of keeping a check on the program, rationing demand and suppressing expenditure. Thank you, Rakshita. Um, I agree with you completely. I think um, the need of the R is definitely to identify the gap between the technology and the solution um, that they hope for. However, 
that's not happening which brings me to my next question which is about the protests themselves um can you tell us a little bit more about um when the protests started um till when they are going to go on who are participating in the protests and what are the demands that are being made um by the protesters okay so i'll okay yeah, nikhil go ahead no uh um, i mean i don't know are you directing the question to any of us anushka um anushka? anyone can anyone can uh, take that up that's a question to everyone yeah so um, ashish why don't you why don't you respond or and if not i will if there's some problem with the uh to ye jo narega sangharsh morcha ka dharna chal raha hai ye 100 dino ka dharna hai और 14 फरवरी से हम लोगों ने शुरुआत की थी इसकी अभी जस्ट हम लोगों ने दो दिन पहले 30 दिन पूरे किए और ये अनिश्चितकालीन एक तरह से है लेकिन हम लोगों ने सांकेतिक रूप से 100 दिन रखा है क्योंकि 100 दिन का इंटाइटलमेंट कम से कम नरेगा में है और हम लोग कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि 100 लोग हमेशा रहे वहां तो सौ लोग सौ दिनों का धरना हमारी मांगे आपको पता ही होगा शायद फिर से दोहरा रहा हूँ एक तो ये एन एम एस एन एम एम एस एप की समस्याएं हैं आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम की समस्याएं हैं और बजट कट इस पर बात अभी नहीं हुई है लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण अपने आप में एक विषय है कि बजट को लेकर क्या सरकार कर रही है नरेगा में क्योंकि ये ऐप और आधार बेस्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम से भी लिंक्ड है कहीं ना कहीं so ashish in future if you can also mix english with hindi because i think some of the listeners may not be hindi speaking people to hum dono bhashaon mein thoda bahut and and a lot of it this was advertised i think in english so so just give a two line summary in english ashish if you don't mind so what i was saying that we have started this dharna 100 days dharna at janta mantar and uh, we have it's a 100 days dharna because narega gives the entitlement of 100 days per household and we are we are hoping that 100 people 100 workers and other activists would join uh, every day it started on fe- 14th of february and uh, we just completed 30 days uh, of the dharna and uh, it will continue we had a break in between for holi uh, but since then we have been uh, doing dharna every day so it will continue for some time now and just to clarify that the demand of the dharna is also to remove aadhar based payment systems to remove national mobile monitoring system and actually uh, uh, respond to suggestions that the protesters and worker groups are giving on what can be done to reduce corruption in it and enhance transparency and the bulk of the people on on protest are all workers themselves I also heard that there was some issue in terms of getting the permission to protest. Um, can anyone speak to that? Yeah, so it's been a constant problem. It's very interesting. So Jantar Mantar has been a home for many of us, and actually acts like Narega or RTI or uh, Street Vendors Act or the Right to Food have been born in some ways in. jantar mantar but in far more liberal or open days when we used to spend nights and days in jantar mantar um because when poor people come in to protest they have no way to go in a city like delhi and i think you will have seen that it's a now under great restriction for a while the only place for protest in delhi that was left was jantar mantar and that was closed off on the basis that other residents were finding it disturbing and every city in the country at the time of the national movement used to have particular places near the seats of power so jantar mantar is also supposed to be considered near parliament street and near parliament but ab- absolutely not and now there is a basis of getting daily every day you have to get permission by a separate group and you have to give all kinds of undertakings go innumerable times and you only get the space from 10 am to 4 pm which means that if you put up a tent and you're coming back the next day for the 100 days 100 days your tent goes down 100 days your tent comes up 100 days you close your house down 100 days you reopen it reconstruct it in a sense and there are 
I went the other day with a puppet uh, and the, the barricades on both sides were through a tiny space you're let in and let out, said, no, no, we'll have to ask. And it took me half an hour to get clearance for the puppet. Uh, people's bags are checked. If someone has a is wearing a badge, when they're leaving, they're told, no, you take this badge off because otherwise it will seem as if you're taking this protest outside the spot. So we are living in times where for anyone, and if you look inside Jantan Mantar, you have come yourself, Anushka, I think, it on certain days, it's much worse than a protest slum because there are people so close to each other, mics into each other's ears, nobody else can hear. Uh, and even that is made so difficult. So I think that's a very important point you bring up, that people come from all across the country, from the poorest homes, taking out time, using their own resources to get here. And you have such hostility to being able to listen to people. What is it, after all, a peaceful protest place where the state and government and society should say, OK, we are listening to people in distress and we can see what we can do. Otherwise, it's no fun to come and protest. Um, thank you so much, Nikhil. Um, and that's why I brought this point up, because I wanted to highlight um, that not that the workers are not just going through hardship because of Nerega, but also in the way that they are protesting, which is why it's really commendable um, to see the resolve with which they are protesting. Uh, hopefully, we have been able to brought, bring some light uh, onto their issues today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, IFF has also made a video wherein we have talked directly to the workers about their issues. Uh, so I will also suggest you go to our Twitter or our YouTube to check that video out. Um, thank you so much for joining us, all the speakers and everybody else who's listening. Um, and yeah, I uh, hope you have Anushka, a good can we make an appeal to all your yes, listeners definitely, to please definitely. do connect with us because this is an ongoing situation. And many of Twitter listeners, because some of us are on Twitter, actually do have a lot of voice. <laughs> which the others here don't. So to amplify the voice of those on protest, if you agree with what they are saying and doing, would be of great use. And we are only too happy to answer questions or doubts. Definitely. Thank you so much for that, Nikhil. Yes, it's very important that everybody who's been listening um, does take out time to um, see what the protesters are saying. If you're in Delhi, please do try to visit Jantar Mantar and see uh, how the protests are taking place. Um, if that's it, I will end the uh, space here. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to IFF and everyone else. Thank you. Bye.